What is up, my fitness junkies? Happy hump day. Happy first day of May. And this topic, guys, is all about ergonomics and breathing. I was talking with Herb earlier today. It's like, you know, these are things that we spend like the bulk of our life doing, right? Like ergonomics, we're always working or sleeping and we're going to talk about that. And obviously we're always breathing. So let's, let's make sure we're mindful of these things uh, because it can make a big compounding difference over time. So let's dive right into it with no further ado. So like I've been doing, let's define it a little bit closer. Ergonomics um, is an applied science concerned with designing and arranging things people use so that the people and things interact most efficiently and safely. Um, I feel like it's just a, a way to really, in a nerdy way, say like, you know, how do you keep yourself feeling good and safe when you're working and just throughout life and stuff like that. So the goal with it is identify tasks that create unhealthy stress on your body um, and prevent injuries by adjusting the way you perform your job. Um, and we're going to talk about the way you sleep as well, stuff like that. So let's dive into it with that being said. And, you know, most of us, I feel like, you know, the bulk of, of us in the group, um, we either sit or stand at a computer when we do our job, you know, that's just how things are these days for the most part. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about first, like sitting in front of a computer, the ergonomic workstation. So a couple of things, like you want to make sure that you're directly in front of your computer. You don't want to be looking down the whole time. You don't want to be looking way up at your computer. You want to make sure you're like looking straight ahead. I feel like that's a really big one. Like these are just these are small things, guys. But like I said, like this stuff compounds over time and like your posture, like if you're paying attention to this stuff, it can make a huge difference to the way you feel. Like I'll, I'll tell you this much, like my, my first year of doing this online stuff, because before this, I was like, you know, a trainer in person, I was always on my feet talking with people. Um, but then my first year of doing this, like I wasn't really paying attention to making my workstation ergonomic and stuff like that. I, I literally was sitting on this bar stool that's right by me here. Um, for the for like the whole first year of me doing this and that was not good for my back and neck and, and just my posture in general like literally there's no back support it's a bar stool it's just you know it's just a stool I was literally sitting on that for like a year and I was not paying attention to where my computer was like I was just hunched over like it just can be a recipe for disaster and I'll, I'll say this much too because a lot of people they act like, you know, squats and deadlifts are bad for your back. Like I've, I've gotten flack online for even just deadlifting and posting videos and stuff like that with heavy weight. And I've deadlifted almost like 600 pounds, but I'll tell you that the times that I've had the, the worst back pain is just when I've sat with bad posture for a long period of time, like whether it's in a car in a plane, like that's when I start to tighten up and my back starts to hurt. So it can really, really make a big difference over time. A um, couple other little things, like when you're when you're sitting, just to be mindful of, like try to have your elbows 90 degrees. Obviously, like I just said, don't have a bar stool with no back support at all. Like have that lumbar support. Like I, I don't have a very good chair right now. At le it at least has back support, um, but it's because I'm on it. My computer's on a bar. <laughs> so I had to get a very specific height of a chair, but I know that when I get like a good um, like table that I'm working on, I'm going to get like one of those gamer chairs. And if like, if you can get a really good, solid, comfortable chair with really good lumbar and back support, going to make a huge difference. And this, this is kind of a small detail. Um, but I've noticed a difference for myself with, uh, just making sure that your legs are 90 degrees like this, because like I said, I sit at a bar when I work. Um, and so my chair is a little bit higher. If I just put my feet on the ground, my legs are like, not like they're a lot more kind of angled down. Um, but there's a little thing where I can put my feet on right here in front, in front of me. And that helps over time. Um, so just little, little things here is got guys, but it, it makes a big difference over time. So it's just, these are small things that I want you guys to be mindful of. Um, we got a few things in the chat here. I'm going to look at it. Um, German Miller chair and it's awesome. Okay. So Zach says he had a, a gaming chair and it sucks. So maybe I won't. Okay. Herman Miller. So I guess that's a brand that Zach's um, recommending for a chair. Cool. So yeah, maybe look into that guys, a Herman Miller computer chair. So yeah. So when I'm, when I'm looking at that stuff, I'll, I'll reach out to you, Zach. Um, looks like Riley says I have a, what is that? Secret labs gaming chair and I love it. Um, cool. So yeah. So I think just, you know, do your due diligence. I would say like, 
I would never just buy something without sitting in it first. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like I actually, even though this chair isn't that great that I have, I went to like four or five different stores and like sat on a bunch of different chairs before I made my decision. Cause I was like, I'm, I'm going to be sitting here <laughs> for hours every day. Right. So I'm going to make sure that like I can sit for a long period of time and my back's good and stuff like that. So it can make a huge difference, but I appreciate you guys' input there. Um, so yeah, just a small thing, small couple of things on sitting, but let's dive into you know, obviously you guys have noticed I stand for a lot of the day too. Um, and that's going to go right into my next point is like, you know, if you work with a computer, I highly suggest getting a standing desk or a standing desk converter. Um, the one that I use right here, it's, I think, I think the brand is very sport, like V A R I sport, um, makes a huge difference. Like I cannot stress enough. Like this was probably, one of the best decisions I made to get this standing desk. Like if, if you work at a computer for a long period of time, I, I don't think I would be able to do this without this, honestly. Like I, I notice like even, even when I do pay attention to like the ergonomics that I just said with the sitting, if I'm sitting for, you know, four plus hours each day, I just notice that my, my back starts to tighten up. So highly, highly, highly recommend getting a, a standing desk or standing desk converter. We got something in the chat here real quick. Um, I thought you were always in a standing desk this whole time. <laughs> I always use a secret labs rally. Yeah. So Evan, every time I'm on calls, I'm, I'm standing. Right. So, and yeah, it's just a standing desk converter. So it's, this thing was like a hundred, like hundred, 150 bucks. So you can find them online these days, just a little converter thing. That's super, super good and super cheap. Um, but yeah, that, the only time I'm sitting basically is when I'm updating y'all's programs. If I'm doing like busy work, for some reason, it's harder for me to stand and do that type of stuff. It's easier for me to think if I'm sitting. Um, but whenever I'm on calls and stuff like that, I'm always standing. So um, let's keep going. There's some tips on standing specifically as well. Um, so same thing. Make sure when you're standing, like right now, like I'm looking straight ahead. Um, so you don't want to be looking down or looking up, stuff like that. Uh, this is another big tip that I find very helpful not really doing it right now because I'm obviously like talking to you guys. I have to be in front of the microphone and stuff like that. But like just literally consciously moving around more. Like if you if you're standing, you still want you don't want to just stand in the exact same spot and not move at all because that that can kind of cause you to tighten up too. So I'm constantly like moving around. Like when I'm on calls with you guys and Herb, like I'm like if I'm not talking, I'm listening to to what you guys are saying. Like I'm moving around, moving my feet, stuff like that. A um, couple other little things, like I said, with the foot thing, it kind of helps sometimes to be able to put your foot on something um, and just kind of like change positions. Uh, but then another small thing that I did, I've got like a little pad right here. Um, and so it's like a soft pad. I think it's, I think it's for the kitchen, honestly, like for in front of the sink for when people are like uh, washing the dishes and stuff like that. But it's like a nice foamed pad so that like, I'm not just staying on the ground all day, helps add a little bit of cushion. So just a small thing like literally you can get these things for like 10 20 bucks um at at like walmart whatever so like just go into the like the home home goods section or whatever like where there's cooking wear and everything like that that's where i got it so small thing but i feel like over time makes a big difference and same thing i said with the feet or sorry the legs when you're sitting um pay attention to your arm angle when you're standing too i've noticed like if i'm way too much like this I'm like typing like this, like I start to get even sometimes tendonitis, like right here in like this part of my elbow. Um, so just something to be mindful of. Let's see what else. Yeah. And everything else is pretty straightforward. I want to say too, though, like if you don't work at a, at a computer, right. If your job is more kind of manual labor, you're walking around stuff like that, actually even moving things like doing physical labor. Cause I did that for a long time too, literally from the ages of 14 to like 19 or 20, um, I was doing construction type work for my dad for like his remodeling business for like residential construction. And, and it was, you know, very manual stuff, like breaking tiles off, like break, like destroying tiles so that we can um, demo and put new tile in and stuff like that. Um, painting always like, you know, having to get in weird spots to paint stuff like that, um, sanding all that type of stuff. So if, if you're doing manual labor, all I wanted to say is make a point on this, that like for one, because I, I did not do this the right way. I feel like I, you know, at such a young age, kind of messed myself up. But I would always like, 
just bend over and not think about like using my my knees like I, like if i was standing on something or even when i remember i was breaking up tile and i was literally just just going through like just bent over my back so long right so try to make things as ergonomic as possible for you when you're picking things up obviously use your legs stuff like that but also the big thing i noticed i don't know why i didn't do this i was just like stubborn but if you're having to be on your knees for anything for that physical labor use knee pads like that's that's a huge one like use things that if you're on your knees like there's some cushion there there's some padding i don't i, I feel so stupid that i didn't do that back then <laughs> but yeah those those things like i said just like this stuff can really compound over time so i know we got some people that literally do physical labor and things like that like pay attention to these things cuz you want to stay healthy as long as you possibly can i would say even maybe more so when you're doing physical labor and stuff like that like you got to really pay attention to that stuff so, um, and then we're going to also talk about, cause this again, like we're either working or sleeping most of the, most of our lives, right? So wanted to make sure we're paying attention to kind of the posture and the way we sleep as well. So I know for me, um, I feel like my bed is starting to get more like this, uh, where it's too soft. It's not that it's too soft, but it's starting to form to my body. And so it's starting to slope or sorry, this one starting to slope in like that. Right. So it's like, now my spine is starting to get like that. Um, the other point, just looking at these two pictures, like I've made a conscious effort to sleep on my back. It's not like the natural thing for me. Na it's natural for me to sleep on my side, but I know that sleeping on your back is a lot better for your spine and your back health. So I've, I've made it like over time, it's just a kind of a process, but I've trained myself to sleep on my back and I, I can attest like it does help. Um, so that's, that's another point there, but even if you are someone that sleeps on your side, like the mattress can make a huge difference, right? If it's too firm, it's going to curve your spine wrong. If it's too soft, it's going to curve your spine wrong. You want just the right fit for you. Um, so take your, you know, that again, like this compounds over time. This is something I just recently started paying attention to and I just got a new pillow. Um, but yeah, I just liked the way this little graph was because uh, it just really shows you like, yeah, you don't want your spine with your neck like obviously like looking like that you don't want too small of a pillow so that it's like sloping down like that um you also don't want your neck too high um you know you want it to keep that neutral spine it's i know it's subtle it seems obvious but like just pay, just pay attention to these because these weren't things that i was paying attention to to before and it's like yeah this is stuff that makes a huge difference over time so um yeah pretty simple but just wanted to to note those things um let's keep going here so yeah, kind of transition out of the ergonomics, kind of talking about more of the breathing. So we used to, we talked about this a lot. I forget what topic it was, but uh, this this past year, I looked a lot more into kind of the science behind nose breathing versus mouth breathing. I'm always now I'm always thinking about it. It's like something you I'm just always conscious of now, and I want you guys to be conscious of because it makes it again a big difference over time. It doesn't sound like it would, right? It's 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 weird to think that just breathing through your nose can make a huge difference compared to breathing through your mouth. Um, but it literally has these different effects on you. So, um, changes your bone structure, believe it or not, uh, like alert eyes, jaw and cheekbone definition, like it changes your bone structure over time, helps you with your sleep. You're going to sleep better, especially like if you can somehow train yourself to sleep more, um, breathing through your nose rather than your mouth. And for a while, we talked about it in the group a while back. I was taping my mouth for a little bit to try to train myself. I, I don't do that anymore, especially this time of year because I get allergies, but I've gotten way better somehow. I think just by training myself when I'm awake to breathe through my nose that now I breathe a lot through my nose when I sleep. So just be conscious of it over time. It's going to start to improve um, a higher CO2. Um, this, is the, this was the big one for me. Um, this is one of the big reasons why I wanted to do this. And I can just over time... I don't know if it could be, could be a placebo, but I've noticed like when I'm able to consciously breathe through my nose a lot more, I feel more relaxed, right? So there's literally, you, you have more, um, parasympathetic relaxation when you breathe through your nose, as opposed to, uh, I think when you breathe through your mouth, it's like sympathetic. Um, so it's kind of more, makes you a little bit more anxious and stressed out. Uh, so that, that's that alone. Like if it was just that, I feel like it's worth trying to, to be mindful of. So, um, again, different like bone structure, spine support, um, good tongue posture, whatever that means. Um, it, this is pretty crazy. Even lower blood pressure, 
right? And I know we got we got some people in the group that are on blood pressure medication, stuff like that, and just conscious of of wanting to have a low blood blood pressure. Um, so big one there too. So um, while we're on this slide as well, just wanted to to briefly talk about it because I don't I don't know it's not something we've really outlined I don't think before, but just the breathing when you're exercising as well. So um, if you're just doing regular reps, like hypertrophy rep ranges, you know, 10 to 15, stuff like that. I just want to make sure that you guys are breathing, right? Because you don't want to hold your breath with that stuff. So just start being mindful of that. Um, if it's lower rep ranges, you know, if you're getting into the power rep ranges, even in the strength rep ranges, you can start being mindful of the Valsalva maneuver. That's something I use. Like if you go, go watch some of my squat videos, you literally take in a big breath of air, hold it in your core, go down and then breathe out on the way up. Right. So that's what the vol solver maneuver is. That's going to help you with your strength. Uh, but when you're going, you know, more for just reps and stuff like that, just make sure you're breathing normally. Okay. So that's, that's with lifting with cardio. I want you guys to be mindful of this nose, this nose breathing. <clears throat> okay. So this is something Andrew Huberman talks about, um, I'm about to show him on the next slide. Um, but this this is going to help you with all this stuff, and it's also going to help train you to to nose breathe if you do the nose breathing with your cardio. This is something because when I was looking into this, I was doing a lot more cardio as well. I was leaning out. It's kind of like doing more bodybuilding style stuff. Um, but when I was doing my cardio, I was always trying to for the as much as I could breathe through my nose, right? And it, it helped clear the pathways, and it also helped me train myself to breathe with through my nose all the time. So when you're and it, and it keeps you in a good, like, that's a good, if, you, if you're struggling to do it, but you're still able to, to breathe through your nose, you also know that you're at a pretty good um, kind of steady state cardio range, like zone two cardio. So it's, it's a good kind of marker for where you're at with that stuff too, with the intensity level. So I wanted to talk about that as well. Where's my mouse? There we go. Cool. So yeah, like I said, Andrew Huberman, Check out these videos. This is where I got a lot, a lot of this stuff that I looked into um, with the breathing. So just how to breathe correctly. Pretty, <laughs> pretty basic title there. Uh, he was also on Tim Ferriss's uh, podcast, and this is where he talks about kind of different breathing techniques, ways to reduce stress with breathing. Another thing is like something I'm trying to be more mindful of is being more diaphragmic with my like breathing with your diaphragm. Like right there, again, in through the nose, can be out through the mouth. Um, but another big thing is like with the breathing, um, like I said, with the parasympathetic relaxation, like this is just something I'm way more mindful of is just if I'm feeling stressed out or if I can literally sometimes I feel like I'm so stressed that I, I'm like, have I been breathing? <laughs> and so when, when I kind of catch myself doing that type of stuff, I'm just like, let me just sit here for a little bit and like take some deep breaths and relax. It's just like something I know it sounds small, but it can make such a big difference if you're just mindful of it throughout the day. Okay. And something we were talking about, shout out to Brandon on here. Um, now, like if, you know, if I'm super stressed out and I just feel like I'm anxious and he was saying he's been doing the same thing recently, it's just like go outside, walk for five minutes and, and then practice the nose breathing with that as well. You're going to feel so much more relaxed and much clearer headspace. So, um, so yeah, I mean, already pretty much went through this stuff. Oh, wait, we got something in the chat here. <clears throat> oh, speak of the devil. Looks like Brandon was saying something with cardio. I used to do three short inhale breaths through nose and out through mouth for two longer seconds, high intensity in for two short breaths and out for one long seconds, if that makes sense. Um, it's not easy at first, but it helps with endurance. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, this stuff is like, it's not easy, right? But it, but when you're able to do it, there's benefits that come along with it. It's going to help you in the long term. So thanks for that input, Brandon. Was this, was this something? Oh, no, that was from Evan. Cool. So yeah, um, you know, I already kind of talked about this stuff, but just start paying close attention to all this. You know, like I've said many times now, it seems small, guys, but this stuff really does compound over time. Okay. Um, I know there's I don't really use it. I think some people in here use like guided meditation, guided yoga apps, and even YouTube videos and stuff like that to help help them just, you know, with stretching and breathing and things like that. Guided breathing exercises. I'm sure there's apps for that too. Um, so maybe look into some of that stuff if you just want to, you know, 
because I, I looked into the Andrew Huberman stuff and it really did help me just think about it throughout the day and, and kind of come up with my own little breathing tactics that I use on a regular basis. So what's this? Swimming for cardio can help you train that by breathing every other stroke or two to three strokes. I, re I remember that, Evan. <laughs> and shout out to Evan. He was a really good um, swimmer back in high school. But uh, yeah, I remember the breathing thing. Like we would have to try to not breathe for a whole 25 meters or whatever. That that was like one of the hardest things about swimming to me. <laughs> but it does it does train you in that way. So pretty interesting. Um. Well, cool. So I think we had at least a couple people and if, um, if not too much, you know, her might chime in too, but, um, this would be the time guys, if you got any, any kind of feedback or your own personal experience with this stuff, um, go ahead and share away. I'd appreciate it. I've got a question. Is is diaphragmic even a word or did you make that shit up? I think it is a word. I heard it a couple okay. times on a podcast. Because you said that and I'm like, yeah. damn, I wonder if that's a word or is he trying yeah. to slip that past us? Just, just trying to sound smart. <laughs> it's that diaphragmic movement. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm not sure if Mike's still on here. Mike, do you want to, do you have anything to share? Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, chime in for a bit. I wasn't really planning on talking today, but uh, okay. Cade's. Cade's uh, plugging me in. So, no, I thought you touched on a lot of really good stuff. Um, I don't know. I assume a lot of the people on this call, some of the folks are, you know, nine to five years, folks who work at a desk. Um, one of the things, you know, everyone's body's different. Everyone pain differently. So hopefully you guys don't deal with chronic pain. But if you spend a lot of time looking at screen, it's really common to develop tech neck. You really realize they're not leaning into the screen. And so it's really important to be mindful of that and kind of – uh, work to tuck your tuck your head keep your I say you're supposed to keep your ear holes and keep your head above your shoulders uh, you want to keep your tin chuck or your chin tucked back um, so that's just something to be mindful of uh, yeah. you know you touched on uh, both good ergonomics for sitting versus standing uh, my honest opinion I think it's terrible for your health to sit for a couple hours a day like even yeah. You know, and definitely to sit for prolonged periods. So um, I end up, I actually stand for about 80% of my day. Nice. Um, sometimes more. Sometimes I'll, I'll realize like, wow, I've been standing since 8 a.m. and work till, you know, 6 p.m. And, and that's actually not, not ideal. You want to alternate back and forth, but be mindful. Um, yeah. You know, and again, everyone's body is different. So just kind of be aware and listen to your body. But, uh, you know, for me, I think it's best to maybe stand for an hour or two at a time and then kind of give myself a break, sit for, you yeah. know, a half hour, five minutes. But uh, if I sit for too long, you know, I have, for those of you who don't know, I have a scoliosis. So I deal with chronic back pain. So I, I, um, I put quite a bit of effort into trying to maintain good ergonomics. And, you know, I'm a pretty good, uh, I guess, person to speak on this topic. Um, on that note, yeah, you mentioned that standing desks are really great. I have an electric standing desk, which is fantastic. It was uh, a bit of a splurge item, but I, I love it. And I, I would recommend, you know, for those of you who do work at a desk, I would recommend getting one of those standing desks so you can alternate back and forth uh, between standing and sitting. Those are freaking fantastic. Yeah. Um, let's see. Another big thing is monitor height, which you did touch on. You, you want to keep your eyes close to the top of the screen, maybe about two inches below the top of the screen. Uh, that might vary a bit depending on how large your monitor is, but ideally you want to be kind of in the upper region of the screen. You don't want to be looking up at the screen. You don't want to be looking down. Yeah. Uh, both things will literally lead to chronic health problems with your neck. It can actually shift your vertebrae, you know, your vertebrae alignment and you'll, you'll start to develop that tech neck, as I mentioned. And, uh, once that starts to set in, it can literally take physical therapy to try and to try and reverse that. Um, let's see what else did I got? Uh, another thing you may have touched on this, but you want to keep your shoulders. You want to keep your shoulders pretty well tucked back, so you don't want to be reaching out like this too yeah. far. And that seems obvious, but if you're not paying attention, it can be really easy to to find yourself sitting with your arms extended, even if it's just for your mouse. Um, for me, I deal with a bit more pain on the right side. And so something I've been talking with my chiropractor recently, he's been recommending I actually learned. Hang on. I got a call coming. Did I cut it? Oh, 
<clears throat> oh, I guess we lost Mike there. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I'll reiterate what he said about, um, um, sorry, what was he saying about like basically, like it's some of these things, like I said, they seem obvious, but it's like insidious. It like, it, it can really creep up on you over time. You don't really realize it. It's like, you know, it's crazy that something so small like this, you wouldn't think could cause something that, um, that requires physical therapy at some point, but like, it just creeps up on you over time. Sorry, Mike. Hey, I was, yeah. yeah. I was just blabbering while you were off. <laughs> oh no. Thanks for filling in. Uh, Meg called me and somehow it, it cut me off. Okay. Um, I think I was saying not to let your shoulders reach forward too far. Yeah. Um, you want to be really mindful of like where your keyboard and mouse setup are and try and have a desk set up, like I said, so that you're not reaching forward. You want to be kind of tucked back and in, yeah. a, in a proper ergonomic position. Um, oh, yeah, I mentioned, you know, if you spend a lot of time at your desk, it might not be a terrible idea to try and teach yourself to use your left hand with your mouse. Um, that's probably, you know, on the on the fringe. Maybe most people here won't need that, but. Aside from that, that's pretty much all I got. You touched on some on some uh, sleep ergonomics as well. I also think that pillows, a lot of pillows, are terrible for people's neck, and they probably don't yeah. realize it. Yeah, uh, I think so too. Yep. I'm, I don't, I'm sure you know other people have experienced this on this call, but you know you might wake up with your neck feeling kind of stiff or off. And I, I think if you have a pillow that's pushing your head too far forward, so if you have too much cushion, I think that can sometimes be bad. Um, I'm not a sleep doctor, so everyone's different, but, um, yeah, uh, me personally, I like to use either a really thin pillow or even just a rolled up towel that I put behind my neck. And that sounds weird, but I can remember even when I was young as a kid, sometimes I would just sleep without a pillow or I'd like cover my face with a pillow, I guess, for light. I didn't know how to use a sleep mask at the time. Um, but anyway, those are just kind of some different tips. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll think- hand the mic over to you, Cade. I think it's a good point on the, the pillow stuff. Yeah. I think most people don't realize it's like, you don't you don't realize until it's too late and then your neck's hurting and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah that's what I was going to say. If I uh, sleep with two pillows underneath my head, I wake up just pissed off and my neck hurting like a son of a gun. It's like <laughs> I've been staring down all night, but yeah. yep. I got like a really thin Me one. I, I just, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. They, the other thing though, my neck and it helps. kind of what Mike just touched on though too is, yeah, it's like you also do want a little bit of curve though, like in your neck. Like uh, that's why the pillow I got like has a little bit of a, a bump, but it's pretty flat. But it kind of like curves in the neck area because uh, you yeah. actually you don't want your spine to be complete or your neck part of your spine, like your cervical spine. You don't want it to be completely straight, right? You want it, you want that little bit of curve. So right, right. Um, we're, yeah. we're supposed to ha- we're supposed to have three curves in your spine starting at your neck, sixty degrees. And the problem with sleeping on a pillow is it's going to straighten your neck. Like Mike said, you want it under your neck, not on top of your head. That's just going to push it forward. Yeah. Um, it's it's funny because you're talking about there's so many people in the gym. We're lifting right, right? We're looking at, we keep telling you guys, do your form. Make sure you let your form do the work. But yet we do stupid stuff during the day. We don't think about that. So yeah. I, just was, I was just counting when Cade was talking. I've worked with about a half a dozen powerlifting champions here in Michigan, when I used to live here and have my own gym, and it wasn't to train them on powerlifting, it was to rehab them after they fucked up trying to pick a pencil up, trying to tie their shoes, bending over too long. Yeah. They just didn't take they didn't take care of themselves, yeah. right? Which blows me away. And obviously, Kate, you know, being in this business, people will take better care of their cars. And you can get a new car anytime you want. Mm-hmm. You're stuck with this avatar you got here, guys, and you better make sure that thing can make it through the work with you. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, as again, my talk tomorrow will pick up where this leaves off on recovery, but people are not they're, they're not spending the time they need on how to make my life easier. Right. Um, how many people here are texting on their phone, watching Netflix, hit the light. OK, I'm going to sleep now. That shit don't work. <laughs> you know, you've got to shut the electronics off an hour ahead of time um, and all that stuff. So, yeah, people don't spend enough time. It's amazing when you have these talks when people are like oh i didn't know that and you're like shit man you should have learned that when you're a kid <laughs> you know so this is very overlooked but very important and like mike and myself and you know when you get you get injured that's when you start paying attention it's a little bit late then yeah yeah so just wanted to get you guys get this in your brain start thinking about it um but i'm gonna go ahead and stop recording and we'll keep chatting here um, but if you're watching the recording, guys, let us know if you have any questions on this. Um, let's have a great rest of the week. Make sure to be on Herb's call tomorrow about recovery and injury prevention. 
um, and we'll talk to you real soon. Elevate. Only obligation is to tell it straight.